Well, hello and welcome back to the MCAT Club. This is our weekly call for Monday, March 31st, 2014. My name is Don Osborne. I am the host of the MCAT Club. And in case you haven't heard before, the MCAT Club is the place to go for up-to-date information about studying for the MCAT, MCAT prep. And I even answer your MCAT-related questions live here on the call. You can find the MCAT Club at Incorda.com, as well as all over the social media, including Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and every place else on the line. As a medical school and business expert, consultant, coach, I work with amazing students like you who really want to get into medical school, but you may be stuck or in some way feel uncertain about your application, your process, how you package yourself as a candidate for medical school admissions. It's my job to help you understand how medical schools perceive you so that you can package yourself correctly for medical school admissions. And therefore, I promise to be the most uplifting and helpful coach and advisor you've ever met because it's my job to take what you have and help you uplift it as much as possible. Our topic for today, first, uh, is open questions and answers about studying for the MCAT. But before I open the call to your questions, I wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking about focus and concentration. As you already know, you'll be sitting in the testing room taking the MCAT for many, many hours. And in order to succeed at this marathon, you'll need to develop your concentration skills beyond your current level of focus and stamina. So you need to work on this and to practice long stretches of intense focus. I've spoken previously that one of the best ways to do that is to take lots and lots and lots of practice tests because taking practice tests, of course, puts you right in that mindset where you are spending a lot of time going through and uh, operating kind of like a computer, receiving a test question, operating through answer choices and moving on to the next question. So there's one other thing I uh, want to mention, uh, which is learning how to stay focused on the problems at hand, the test questions and the answers, and tune everything else out. You see, it's relatively easy to tune out uh, any outside distractions like, you know, a door closing or an engine siren or a fire engine siren going by. But the real trick is to tune out your own distracting thoughts, like uh, you're in the middle of a test question and you just can't let go of the question that you were working on previously and you wind up rethinking your answer choices or you experience a sense of doubt about what you've already uh, worked on. So it's very, very tempting to get yourself distracted uh, by those kinds of thoughts. So if you find yourself rereading a passage or a test question because you read it, but nothing actually went inside, then you know that you're not focusing on what's immediately in front of you and you're no longer doing that computer operation of reading a passage or a test question, working through answer choices and moving on to the next thing. So how do you refocus? Well, the only way that you can do that is to set aside all the distracting thoughts and come back into what you're working on immediately. So stop, take the 15 seconds, breathe in, breathe out, repeat that and refocus. Breathe, relax your body a little bit and then begin again. I like to call this uh, as having lots of beginnings in the MCAT. So rather than taking the one long exam, you're taking <clears throat> many, many small exams and you're starting fresh, you're starting new each time. So consider the begin again exercise as a great trick to help you improve your MCAT score. So that's my recommendation on staying focused. I hope you liked it. There are a lot of other materials out there available on how to improve your concentration. And I think it's an important step for you to be doing uh, and preparing uh, as you get ready for your uh, run uh, taking the MCAT uh, this coming cycle. Okay, so I'm going to open up the call to your questions, and I see that Keith is on the line. Hi, Keith. How are you? Hey, good. How are you? I'm doing great, man. It's good to hear your voice. So what do you think about this concentration thing? Um, I agree. <laughs> I mm. know that when I took it, uh, I'm studying for my second time taking it. So the first time... Uh, the first couple of questions, like, will throw you off, like, because you're in there, yeah. you're doing it. And then, yeah, I had to take a break from it. Um, yeah. The biggest part that I have with the focusing aspect is during the verbal section. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't, I'm not the fastest reader, but I try to, uh -huh. you know, I try to read so that way I can retain as much as I can, like, the main ideas to help with those questions. Sure. But then I spend a lot of time on the questions, like, rereading them to make sure like that I understand it and I think that's kind of mm -hmm. where like I have it timed out where I go through all of them except for one and then I only mm -hmm. have like a few minutes left for the last passage and then it's right. 
scramble. So, yes. Yeah, that's a great point. So, you know, obviously there is the test that you actually take where you're reading the passage, you're looking at the test question, you're really working hard to understand the question, and then you go through and look at the answer choices. So that's one flavor of the MCAT. And as you pointed out, there's another MCAT, and that's the MCAT where you really don't have enough time. Usually that one last passage that you have reserved off is a passage that you're not going to really spend a lot of effort on. <clears throat> and that's where you're doing a very different MCAT. And that MCAT is like, well, in my case, I never even read the passage. I just look at the test questions, eliminate answer choices based upon my pattern recognition, pattern matching skills, and my memory regarding what MCAT questions and answer choices tend to look like. I use the process of elimination, and I just bubble an answer choice uh, literally based upon the pattern of the answer, how it's structured. And uh, as a result, I don't even read the passage uh, on that particular, uh, for that, those particular questions to, because I've run out of time. Yeah, because then it's just, you try to use the context clues to, like, cause yeah. the, the questions will guide you through kind of the main idea of the story, and then you I kind of just pick out what's best, what kind of flows yeah. with the theme. Yeah, literally what I'm doing is I'm, I'm reading the questions as a substitute for reading the passage in those last, like, four or five minutes to give me just enough information that I can make a reasonable guess. And in my case, rather than trying to find the best fit, I just eliminate what I know is uh, historically a bad fit. And whatever's left over, I just don't even read. I say, okay, that's got to be it, because the other three I've eliminated. Understood. Yeah. Okay, very good. So that about wraps it up for me on the topic of concentration. Uh, Keith, did you have any other questions you wanted to ask me today about either verbal reasoning or uh, anything else regarding the MCAT? Um... That was pretty much it, just trying to trying to get my time down. Like, what's the best way to work through, like, the verbal passages, like, to read it? Because I know I spend a lot of time on the sure. on the questions themselves. Um, right, right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Like, making sure, like, you know, that it's either in the passage or it's the main idea. That's kind of what I'm trying to... Right. Yeah, well, I mean, there are a lot of approaches... Sure, no problem. There, I know there are a lot of approaches to this, and everybody's got a different approach. Some people say, you know, you got to go through, read the passage, and re-outline the passage, and they use terms like map the passage, or outline the passage, or annotate the passage. <clears throat> Some people say they want you to go through the passage and circle key concepts throughout the passage. Or in, in the case of the online passage, you, you make little notes into your scratch paper about the passage. Other people say, well, read the questions first to give you some context clues so that you know when you're uh, you know, reading the actual passage itself, you're predisposed to recognizing areas of the test that are going to be uh, important for questions later on. Yeah. And although you know, you're welcome to try all of those strategies, I think it's important that you pick one fairly early on uh, in your uh, preparation and stick with it. Just let it be, you know, the method that you use and don't worry about other approaches. Uh, for me, uh, in my background, uh, I'm fairly used to identifying key concepts from a paragraph by paragraph basis. So I, I tend to be a note taker. So I'll uh, go through the passage and I will um, write my notes and kind of give myself a very, very simple skeleton structure of the actual passage, uh, paying attention to uh, key clues into author tone. Uh, so I want to know if the author, you know, likes the topic that he or she is talking about, doesn't like the topic, uh, or if there's a change in tone, you know, some, maybe the author likes some parts and doesn't like other parts, or is in favor of some parts, or disfavors other parts, or agrees with, that's what I mean about liking. It could be any of these different things. They're, they're, they vote for or vote against, they approve of, disapprove of, agree or disagree with. Any of those things are what I'm looking for. That's sort of a yes, no kind of a um, distinction <clears throat> on the, from the point of view of the author. And then independent of what the author thinks, uh, you know, I also take a moment and just compose what I think about the topic. Uh, and uh, what that does is it gives me a nice sense of independence uh, from what the, author, the author's point of view. And it also helps me recognize what my biases might be so that I don't get caught up in my own biases relative to the, the test questions themselves. So the test, if the test question asks me for the author's perspective on a particular thing, then it's easier for me to differentiate between the author's perspective and my own. Uh, so that's, that's happened to be my approach, and I like that a lot. Well, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. My pleasure. 
All right, so that wraps it up for today's call. Uh, we all we meet every uh, Monday at 4.30 Pacific time. Go for about an hour or until we finish up uh, with the questions. I look forward to talking to you guys next week. Until then, have a great and an amazing uh, week, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye for now.